Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Today I'd like to talk about how I made this ZBrush model and put in Marmoset. I named him James the Clown because I was looking on the internet under Pinterest. I have a whole little catalog of clowns and the name of the poster was James. So the, <laughs> the name of this piece is James the Clown. I start out with projecting primitives onto a sphere in ZBrush and a lot of what kind of came around to trying to push to get this image out so quick I was looking at a lot of interviews with uh, Beeple and if you don't know who that is he puts out like a, a 3D piece a day almost and so that kind of inspired me to kind of push to see if I can create something within a shorter time frame because usually I take a little bit longer than um, a few days so I kind of put the clock to say like let me try to finish this a little bit faster and so on the weekend I spent a lot of time just sitting down and uh, trying to complete this model in in a short amount of time given the short amount of time I wanted to throw it inside a marmoset tool bag and that helped a lot with the speeding up of the process so if you look here I'm using the project primitives inside a ZBrush to actually kind of get some of the features. The nose, the, the chin, and I enjoy using this uh, tool. It's really handy when you kind of want to block out some features inside a ZBrush and not really jump back and forth with importing a primitive to cut into your model. You can actually just put it in there and actually start doing your thing. So the reference had this clown and he's He's got a long head and he's got a little hat and I like that it kind of reminded me of a uh, those creepy clowns and usually clowns are like my default whenever I do anything creative like if I don't have an idea and I need to get something out and I want to just push something creative I'll draw a clown or something like that so what I'm doing here is just kind of cutting in the eyes cutting in the nose cutting in the chin and just kind of chiseling out the the model and blocking it out and knowing that I wanted to do this in a short amount of time I've actually kind of just forced myself to say all right we're gonna make some mistakes we're gonna make it's not gonna be pretty but hopefully hopefully near the end I can have a completed piece and actually say all right this is done and that's what I wanted to do I didn't want to uh, think too much about it I just wanted to have fun I wanted to create and get something out and go from there and actually it, it it worked out for me to think like that because a lot of times if I give myself too much time I don't really finish a piece I put it in a folder and come back to it later and I'm trying to go back through all my older pieces to kind of complete those too because I see a lot of them that are like 75% done and I'm just like why did I just stop <laughs> so a lot of times whenever that happens is because at the time I didn't give myself a time frame to say finish this and the pieces that I do finish I did that I actually said like I need to finish this in this amount of time and that seems to work but sometimes I forget telling myself to do that because you know life will happen or things will come up and you just don't get to finish things and so watching these interviews with people he was like saying that he even got down to the, like the last minute of posting something or getting something done or whatever I don't know the exact details but if you look up interviews he explains that like he tries to get something down to that last hour and, it, and it, <laughs> if you push yourself I guess you can do it every day and uh, every day I, it, it's something uh, I would hope to achieve but for now I used to do um, a lunchtime sculpt daily but those were very like like when I was learning ZBrush new features and and that would help but it, they were never completed and I would go back in my folders and some of them were pretty close that I would continue the next day because I liked what I started with but I never completed them because they were just like daily um, daily things that I would just kind of do to learn but going back and seeing the library of daily 
sculpts. I'm like, some of these could be finished and just polished off. And a lot of it was not using poly paint, not using um, just little tools that have always been there that I never use. And now as I'm older, I, I feel like I see where I, I, I would stop. So the two key factors that I did not do um, learning zebras or learning any of these programs is I wouldn't pose these characters I wouldn't move them around I, I was always afraid to move them because I was like I'm gonna come back and fix it and work in symmetry but that was my biggest uh, thing roadblock so in this one I'm like let me pose them let me let me move them around let me move it to not be symmetrical and break that symmetry Right now I'm working in symmetry to, for speed, but once I get past the point, I'm like, just break the symmetry and keep going. The other thing is poly paint would tell me like, all right, if I poly paint it, I don't want to have to re-sculpt, but now I'm just like, just poly paint it, just get it done and, and actually push to get this model completed. A lot of it is trying to get over that mentality that like, all right, I want to go back and fix this. Well putting in a, a small time frame or a short deadline for yourself kind of eliminates that and you're just kind of like oh I just want to get this done and that changes things that changes your mentality and that changes to think like <sighs> quit going with the what if and try to do what what you need to get done so now I'm doing the hat now I'm getting a lot of the little I'm blocking out the character from what the reference is and just going from there. And it's not exactly like the reference, but I kind of use that for inspiration for what this clown is going to look like. The image, it didn't really have a background. It just had, or it didn't have all the balloons that you saw previously on the first slide. The balloons were something like an afterthought. I was just like thinking like, all right, I want to get into Marmoset. I need to put a scene. But I don't want to build the whole model, so I only did the head and the the bust, really. And I didn't want to have to do more than I needed to. I just, I had in my mind that I'm going to frame it from his chest up. So, knowing that, I, I was going to put the hand in, but then I was just like, alright, time's kind of cutting close. And you'll see, probably in, this, in these videos, I think this video... It's gonna probably I'm gonna probably break it up in a couple chunks because it's a couple hours long of all this and then I'm gonna speed it up as well as you see here because it's it's just want to get the idea across of what um, going from here to there to Marmoset and starting and you know just no breaks <laughs> no breaks on this project just just going just not even thinking just trying to like all right huh, just going throwing the eyes in throwing the nose just sculpting as much as I can without thinking it's like I just need to get from point A to B and don't look back if I made a mistake so be it uh, and looking back at the uh, final render I'm like oh, I could have done the ears a little bit better but for what I wanted for my personal uh, testing of myself to see all right let's see let's put a deadline on myself and and not not don't look back and I've done that so many times it's just getting in that mentality and I need, and those interviews from people kind of like inspired that it's just like yeah I just need to just go forward and don't look back and just push push the gas just just go with it don't even think so a lot of this is just kind of just speed modeling really and just trying to get to the end and I kind of had a plan in mind when I saw the image I was like alright I can do this I can do that I can can get this halfway there because if you saw another video that I did with the it was a female clown she was kind of done in the same fashion I was like I want to just get this done so I can get it inside of marmoset and that's where the fun comes in whenever you can start lighting your your model and start coloring you know giving a little bit more life to to what you created and both sides are fun it's just sometimes just like getting to that final stretch just it's kind of like when you're running, you see the finish line, and you're like, oh, I can see the finish line, and there it is, and that's where you know you're like, all right, and now it's just kind of like having fun with trying to get your style and your look. Right here, the hat, I was trying to do polygroups because I knew I wanted to kind of keep it simple, 
but I also wanted to texture it. So I wanted to have polygroups to be able to select in the hat to give it little stripes as the reference head. And going from there, and you can see I'm just using the damn standard to cut in a lot of these details using the um, Sculptures Pro is a is a awesome tool inside of ZBrush, and that helps out so much. Just th this kind of keeps you from overthinking things. You just model, 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 and then don't even look back. <laughs> it helps out a lot. You can see I'm just trying to add little finishing touches. Going from different parts I kind of jump around and this first video is mainly just doing the head and the, the next videos are more of the, the suit. I probably could have did some of the other features a little bit differently. Um, there's some new features in ZBrush that came out and there was like a where you can pull a spline and it creates like just it looks like a there was a demo where they do like a, a whale and I've seen people use it for fish fins and stuff like that. I probably could have used that for the bow tie. But these features were still new and I didn't, with the time frame that I gave myself, it wasn't enough to explore to try to do that a little bit. So, uh, and you can see right here, I actually try to explore using those new features. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, well actually, the new features are turned on, but I was like, oh wow, you can actually do a mask and do the new features inside of there but I didn't understand how they worked so I kind of turned it back to the default I believe I just wanted to get a mask so I can pull out the, the little cap they wear as clowns but it created some geometry inside of there there's some hidden geometry inside of this head and you're like oh wow but uh those are some features I need to go back and play with and there, there's some cool methods I've seen on online and I'm just like oh that's so cool I love all the tools inside of ZBrush that actually help speed up the process and let you be an artist and not so much a technical uh, person even though there is a little bit of a learning curve of where everything is and where all the tools are inside of ZBrush once you have an understanding of where they're at then it, it gets a little bit easier it can be overwhelming. I, I, every new update I know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna spend a few days just doing homework on whatever this is. And there's some old features that were included last year that I didn't even get a chance to really explore. You can see the ear is real sloppy, but I, in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna cover it up with hair. And the final render, it doesn't cover it up with hair. <laughs> so, you do see the ear, but it's what it is. I, I just wanted to get to the finish line, like I said. We're going to make some mistakes. And this is just for personal creativity and just getting it out there. The Z color is something I, I, I'm starting to lean more on using. I need to figure out how to do a little bit more libraries and save them out and, and bring them back in. But I enjoy using this tool. It's a really great tool. I used this tool on that. Mars attacks and other little models that needed color it helps out because you can go back and actually just start chiseling the colors where you need them blocking out what's what's where and you don't have to forget what color you used you can press C on the model but sometimes it's just safer because if you start blending colors it might not get the exact color So I'm going to do the mouth. And you can see that I'm not... Or Before, when I would model stuff, I would, I would be hesitant to do any color on the model. But since I... Like I said, I'm just, I'm just going. This is not even stopping. I don't even think I Z-remesh this model. I That was something that, that was also... Where I was like, the topology's not right. It's not ready. So, didn't care. I just wanted to get there. And what I do is do a project primitive with poly uh, paint on. And it works. It's just you sometimes need to up the resolution a little bit more than usual. 
for it to project correctly. And you might need to do a little cleanup, but it helps. It gets you most of the way there. The correct way for me, I probably should have Z remeshed it and would have gone that way, but like I said, no breaks. You can see uh, just real loose. And I guess if you paint, do face paint anyway, it's going to be kind of messy, right? It's never perfect unless you just have somebody paint your face. <laughs> so I didn't worry about lines being crooked or being too exact because in reality, you're not going to paint your face exact the way it should be. So I let myself, you know, not think about it. Have have the, I could have per, turned on the lazy brush, but I didn't because I wanted it to have that loose, a little bit more loose feeling that it was drawn in. And that kind of helped me from overthinking things. They painted some like little weird smiley thing on the reference, but I just wasn't feeling that. It looked it looked too I don't know, it didn't work. I took them off. I don't believe the reference had it painted around the eyes, and that was something I was just kind of adding in my own little artistic touch to it. Because I always like the eyes being a little bit more uh, defined. And the other thing is that I didn't want to do eyelashes because I, I gave myself that time frame. So I figured paint it black and you'll get the idea of eyelashes with the paint. Now, normally I probably could have broken this down into be a full eyelid, but again, I'm just painting in, just doing a real rough version of eyes. And actually these eyes are what you see in their final render. I didn't even try to go back after this um, I Z remesh it and clean it up at the end but really this is what you see and I put a reflective material in uh, Marmoset give a little peakness to the edges of the eye to kind of give it a little give them that I don't know like, I guess you can say I, I'm also inspired by that movie It and the clown kind of always has that crazy the crazy eyes so I was just going with that and for inspiration too so back and forth with uh, where inspiration comes from you can see I'm jumping around I'm trying to get it it's as blocked out as fast as I can and here I actually want the poly paint to help me just fill in the gaps but the trick is, if you use uh, the dynamic, it will, I think it blurs it or something. So I was having trouble trying to get this um, to be a little more defined. And then I put some edge loops in, and that kind of helps it from getting too blurry whenever I'm trying to make the clean texture. But you can see, I'm, right, I'm trying to make little poly groups going in around they had like little stripes on the hat and I like that so I just added it back in so I'm trying to select things with the poly groups fill it here and there and you can see right there that the since it's so low res it, it, it's blending into the other polygons a lot of poly paint is is needed by how much subdivisions you have on the model and that actually helps so I just kind of go back and add some more loops and keep the poly paint and go from there you can see right here where it's blending I I remember early starting with ZBrush uh, I poly painted it a whole little character, right? 
and whenever I try to export it, uh, the textures came out real blurry, you know, just like, oh, the, and in my mind, I was thinking like ZBrush doesn't do this very well. <laughs> in reality, I didn't know how to use the tools. And so I needed to use the highest subdivision to create the texture and then go back to the lowest subdivision to use that texture. I used the lower subdivision to create the texture and export it out. Lesson learned years later. <laughs> but that's what you have to do. You have to have a high resolution model, polypaint on that, and then use that to project to your lower. That's something that I had to learn on my own. Uh, there was a few kind of like, man, it doesn't work. I remember my first uh, time using polypaint. It was like, what, years ago. <laughs> uh, let's see, maybe 15 years, maybe 14 years ago. Like, very first trying to learn ZBrush or whatever. And uh, it was 12 years. I don't know. It was, it was a little good over 10 years at least and I did a poly paint I poly painted the whole model and I didn't know about the little ZBrush icon or not the ZBrush the little paintbrush icon in your sub tools I guess that got turned off when I reloaded ZBrush and in my mind I thought I lost everything <laughs> so that scarred me from ever using poly paint for like years it, it was like I don't want to use poly paint because I spent so much time painting the character and I was just like, oh, I lost all that work. I was like, I didn't know where it went. I didn't know what happened to it. And in my mind, I was just like, well, ZBrush doesn't hold poly paint too well, you know? And now I'm like, oh, that if I would have only known, I would I would have been poly painting all the way. And that's part of it that I, I didn't incorporate in my, my pieces. I would, I would be just, I would always use the default materials and never try to poly paint. I was, I was scarred for a long time of using poly paint. So, we all learn, I guess, as we go. I guess right here, I, I step away um, from the computer for a little bit, but giving everything, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the suit, trying to block it out, looking at references and stuff like that. So, for the bow tie, I actually use like primitive uh, geometry. Even for the the collar, just go back to the cylinder and just throw that in. Work it. Use that model, and then use the poly groups to just select the outer, and then use the thickness shell, dynamic thickness, and go from there, and then apply it delete uh, loops is always good to use on the cylinders if you're like man I don't want to clean it up <laughs> just use the little delete loops I, I made a little button on the corner for my UI because I use that often for these models that I bring in and they're just kind of like oh I don't want to do that I probably should do a library of just insert meshes but I like just going to that little corner and just grabbing it too or a pinned So you can see the collars getting put in and just blocking out the model just kind of gives you a visual and knowing that I just wanted to have the bust. The other thing I started to use more over the years is the masking tool. The mask tool kind of, it's always been there for me, but I never used it as much as I should to create models quickly. The extract tool is another one that I started to um, slowly start using as a tool inside of ZBrush. That the extract tool gives so much more uh, flexibility of just saying like I need this, I need that, and extract it and go from there. And I have another tutorial, uh, a video where I use the extract tool to Make a macro to clean up your mesh as you extract it. 
with my updates I haven't brought in the new macro or my old macros and stuff like that every time you do an update you usually gotta kind of go back and reorganize all your um, tools and stuff put them in the new folders the arms I wanted to do hands and have it in the scene but given the, the little time frame I gave myself I was like <sighs> there wasn't enough time of the day so I just went with this just using the bust and then you just got a creepy clown standing with a lot of balloons around in the final right here you can see I'm trying to get the suit just blocking it out I'm gonna use the extract and just go from there a lot of times uh, this this part right here I kind of wanted to clean up the model a little bit more but as I was going along I'm just like you know what I got just stop thinking just just keep going forward and that's where this is going this is you I'm gonna testimate just try to get a little, a little bit more resolution on the on the model going from here and there now you can see all this trying to get a little more definition on this here I love Sculptors Pro because it's just so organic and a lot of times you don't have to really you just you just need to create <laughs> So this is sped up, double speed, but as you can tell, I I kind of went just going forward, just no brakes, and this is about how far I've gotten, and it would probably be close to an hour of modeling. I used to try to do uh, at least an hour a day of zebra sculpting so that would kind of force me uh, to speed up because I knew I only had an hour it used to be I would use my lunch time to kind of learn zebras and so that kind of like maybe speed up a little bit more too to to have a little window of time so cleaned it up I'm gonna probably extract this version and so I'm pushing and pulling and you know what I don't even think I, I uh, extract this I just start sculpting because extracting the model would have created more uh, geometry that I would need to deal with I do extract here and there but there's a point where I'm just like, you know what? Let's just get this done. I was like, I need more resolution on that mask. So this is going to be the little shirt underneath. And I like to try to put buttons on. I'm extracting here and there. You can see. And... It, if you don't put the back face masking, then it kind of goes all the way through. And I just have to fix that. Kind of deleting out some stuff. You can see I'm having a little trouble finding the extract inside of here. get something going right here and then you just see remesh your model going along so you can kind of see where everything's going everything is just very basic primitives everything's very uh, simplified but to get from point A to B I, we, we, we use primitive shapes to get to where we needed the model So. 
so now I'm trying to go in and start masking off some stuff. So this is the little folds on the suit. This I do extract because really I just wanted to have like that extra depth. And then layering some of the stuff kind of gives it that easier access to make it look a little bit more, a little more than it is. Very loose, very rough. Knowing the composition before I get to the end, I was kind of already having the idea of some of the balloons being in the foreground and being in the back, so I didn't really need to focus too much. I just wanted to give the impression of this clown. Very loose. No, it was <laughs> thought out. I was like, oh, there's some extra geometry right there. All right. Let's get rid of that. Boom. Done. So usually clean, cleaning it up. When I use Z-Modeler, I usually put it at half and just keep pressing the button until I get to a happy point and then go from there. And then I use the thickness and then the everything else with it. it. Usually it usually works. This little thickness thing is such a cool add-on to ZBrush that, oh man, I wish it would have been in there sooner, but it's, it's all good. So there you go, you kind of got the idea. So this is getting near the end of this video though and just really wanted to start getting these videos of this clown put out there. Um, been meaning to do it sooner but things kept coming up. I've actually got all the videos already recorded, I just gotta put them online. So I just wanted to show a little bit of the process of going from here to there and the next few parts are just kind of like the part including the hair and the suit and cleaning up doing the buttons and the head is pretty much modeled and then after that's the marmoset marmoset's not too much it's really just bringing in the model um, there is a cleaning process that I have to do and I believe I kind of show some of that I really all I do is just unwrap each individual part and then apply a normal map, a displacement map, and a texture map. And just jumping back and forth between here and there. So just getting a little collar, <laughs> fighting this collar. And there's some transpose in the next videos too where I kind of pose the model a little bit more differently and give some features. There is a few crashes that I had. I don't remember what I did. Um, I think I, I, got, I posed them and then I was going to add some something and it locked up and I had to start over. So it, there's a little bit of back and forth. That'll happen. Just make sure you make saves. Save often. For me, the reason why I had to start over is because I wanted to record the process, so I went back and redid what I did. When you have recording in mind, you're like, oh, I gotta redo that so I can capture it. And I just started over from that point where I went. And if I didn't know what I did, I just watched my video again. It's like, oh, okay, I did that. Using cylinders for the bow tie helps a lot. just going around making shapes there is a brush in here that uh, I use for the flare of the bow where it pulls out I rarely use this brush but I wanted to use it on this version uh, for the bow let's see if it's in this video there you go this this brush I rarely use but for this one I was like I want to use that brush <laughs> and there you are the, the bow tie is just really quickly drawn in because time I didn't have the time and I, I really wanted to get this done 
it got me there halfway. I was just like, you know what? Let's just use it. Let's go with it. The reference had a big bow tie, so we clean it up. I clean it up and just work with it. I use some of the the what do you call it? The fabric or whatever the real time stuff to inflate it a little bit, but that's it. So hopefully this video was informative. It's getting near the end of this little time frame and I just want to do segment one of this clown, James the Clown, and get it online. So if you have any questions, just post them below or if I over you know overlook something that you have a question on, feel free to ask. But yeah, that's most of this video. I'm about to wrap it up and, and I'll post the next video soon. Thank you for watching and have a good day.